and so glad that the Lord has allowed us to be back together again. I am so happy and so glad for all of the many blessings that God has handed down to all of us. And I always say that God keep on blessing us over and over again, even when we don't deserve the blessing. The blessings of God is renewed every morning. And I don't know about you, but I know that I am grateful to God to see another day. And I always ask God to help me to uh, accept the things that I can't change, help me to accept the things that need to be changed in my life, and help me to be a better person. Help me to help somebody else along the way. Order my steps and stay with me throughout the day, throughout the night, and help me not to stumble. Help me to stand and to represent him, because I don't want to fail or misrepresent Jesus the Christ because he has been good to all of us and I am so grateful for that. But I got my license at the age of 16 and I used to drive for a pastor by the name of, we call him Reverend Edie, Nelson Edie. He had pastor and were the founder of the New Jerusalem five baptized holiness church in the city of Sumter, South Carolina. But at this particular time, when I was 16, he was pastoring the Apostle Church in Columbia, South Carolina, Apostle Fire Baptized Holiness Church. And he asked my father to allow me, because he was an eligible general, he asked my father to allow me to drive for him and to accomplish him and keep him company on the interstate late at night. And my father granted him permission with my mom. They gave me permission to go. And a lot of times I would take my sister Carolyn along with me and him. And I asked him, I said, Reverend Edie, may I ask you something? And, he's, and he called me Arthur and sometimes he called me nephew. He said, go ahead Arthur, what, what is it you want to know? And I said, well, Pastor Edie, I said, I don't understand something, and I know that I'm a little young, but I don't understand. And he said, what's that? And I said, I don't understand why our men die so early and leave their wives and their children behind um, at such early age. And he said something to me, to me that night that was so profound that it stood with me all of my life up until this day. I never forgot it. I, I, I just won't forget. I can't forget because he instilled in me. And he said, I'm going to tell you something, um, a nephew. When a child is born, the mother usually pray over that child, and sometimes she'll pray for herself. And she'll ask the Lord to allow her to live to see her babies or her child grown. And these were his exact words. He said, men don't do that. Very few men are ask God to allow them to live to see their children grow. And I said, oh, I never thought about that. And I remember that from that night. And the next year, 17 years old, my oldest daughter, was born. And um, I remember what Elder Edith said. And from my firstborn, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, allow me to live to see all of my children grow. Whoever comes following her, allow me to live to see all of my children grow. And I came by to tell you, that prayer that I made at the age of 17, I've been praying it every chance I get down through the years as the kids was growing up, coming up in school and off to college. And I was asking God, God, please let me live to see my children grow. And I asked God that for over 40 years. And I came by to tell you that God granted that prayer. That prayer worked. 
And I'm saying to all of our men, especially to the young men that have children in this day and time, in this troubling time, I mean, now the kids are faced with so much more than what I was faced with when I was a teenager. They have more access to more deceivable or deceiving things and they can get into trouble more easier now than it was when I came along. But I want every young father that have a baby, a newborn, or even a, a grown child, a, a big age of age child, start asking God to allow you to live to see that child grow up, to see that child grow. And I assure you, if you ask God to allow you to live like our mothers back in the day, our church mothers back in the day, when they were younger, they would ask God, Lord, let me live, see my children grown. Allow me to live to enjoy my children. Allow me to see some of the things that they would accomplish in life. And they would pray over their children and pray for themselves. And I'm saying to all of the men everywhere, if you're doing it, God bless you. Keep doing it. I came to tell you it'll work. But by chance, if you're not praying and asking God on a daily basis, every chance you get, every chance you can remember, ask God. God, allow me to live to see my children grow. And I guarantee you, if you ask God with a sincere heart and a sincere spirit, God will grant that prayer unto you. I come back here 40 years later, and my kids now are from 40 all the way down to 20. And thank God every last one of them is alive, well, doing well, doing their own little thing, as we call it. And, and let me tell you something else about that. When God allows you to live to see your children grown, whether you are male or female, they may not always do what you want them to do, but that's still your child. You are still their parent. You have to love them regardless. When God gives you long jeopardy to live, you will see some days that you don't understand some of the things that they do. You don't want to accept some of the things that they do or say, but as a Christian parent, especially. You have to accept and embrace them children and show them the godly love. Don't be like the elder brother that stayed around the church always condemning somebody for what they're doing. You can't always beat your children over the head because they're not doing right. Always remember, a sinner don't have to have you to remind him or tell him that he's a sinner. A sinner already know that he's a sinner. What a sinner need to see is the Christ in you. You allow the Christ in you to shine before your children and everybody else's children in the community. And the Bible said in Proverbs, I'll never forget it. He said, train up a child in the way that should be raised. I add my word in there. Bring them up in the admonition of God under righteousness. And if you bring those children up and teach them godly principles, I want you to know it's like the word of God is like a, a, a hook in a fish mouth. It gets in the gill of the fish. And when that fish is trying to get loose because he's on that hook, he may swivel and he may turn. He may even do a somerset flip. But that hook will bring him back to surface or bring him back to you. The same thing applied to the word of God. When you put the word of God, in, oh my God, I feel some help coming down. You put the word of God inside of your children and love them. And when they are stray or when they stray away from the word of God, I came to tell you they won't go but so far. Because the word of God is like a hook. A hook. I had to pause there for a minute because I got happy. And that child may stray away, that child may go away, but that child will soon return. And I tell every parent, 
I don't care what your child is involved in. Keep on praying. For the Lord is nigh. And after a while, that child will come home. And when he come home, embrace that child. Love on him. And like I said earlier, don't be like the elder brother. Always throwing up the things that they've done in the past. Allow the past to be the past and move on. Drive on. I love all of my children. I love them all. Now, they don't always do what I want them to do. All of them is not in the church right now. But that's all right. I got the word of God a hook in the gill. And they can't go but so far. And after a while, they'll throw up their hands. Good God Almighty. Say, I yield, I yield, I yield. That is my prayer now that God would save all of my children and save your children. But you've got to keep the word of God in them. You have to show forth love and kindness. And I guarantee you, if you show some love to these children, even when they are wrong, if you show them a little bit of love, that love will draw them to you and it will draw them to Christ. I want you to keep me in prayer because I'm still learning how to be a parent. You know, I'm, I'm still learning. I, I don't know at all, but I've learned this one thing, that if you pray and ask God, Prayer changed things. I'm out of here. I'm, ex I'm kind of sorry if I got a little excited there. I was getting ready to preach. I had to catch myself and get out of that preaching mode because I felt it coming on. But I just stopped by and I wanted to share that with someone. God bless all of you. We look forward to seeing the ones that we visit a lot, all of the churches and the members everywhere. Try to only visit ministries in your prayers. Lift us up. Pray for us. That God would take us to a higher height and deeper depth in his name. I'm gone. I'm out of here. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Hold on. As Bishop Patterson always say, help is nigh unto you. I'm out of here. Thank you for tuning in to Tristone Pause for Power broadcast. Send all your correspondence to Tristone Ministries, P.O. Box 55138. Atlanta, Georgia. Zip it. 30308. I'm out of here. I'm gone. God bless you.